Jordan Davis is about to wreak havoc. The guy being a schvelt 350 pounds is taking everything serious because he said Vic Fangio puts up with no BS. Definitely. I'll be able to answer the call. I know it's required of me. I know Vic is leaning on me. I know the D-line is leaning on us. Um, so I definitely think that I'll be able to handle it. That's what I'm working for. Um, nobody's coming to save us now. So, um, and we just keep on working. By the way, I can dig back here. You know, Jordan Davis blew my mind. He blew my mind. I said to him, I said, no cookies for me, no cookies for thee. And he said, you know what? I'll take that. I'll take that with the cookies, but I'm going to raise you juice. That's right, juice. No juice. No juice for your big fat caboose. And I'm going to have to say, Jordan Davis is very inspirational for me. Jordan Davis looks like he's 225 pounds. And what really is crazy and what really blows my mind about the whole thing is he's 350 pounds right now. He's 350 pounds. There's no way. It's, it's insane. I mean, we thought he was playing around 330, maybe 340, uh, and he had to get down in the 320s. He, he looks like he's 220 right now. Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter are the key to this defense. I have said this over and over again, and what I'm seeing from Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter, I'm telling you, man, I cannot wait for this season to begin. I'm excited about this defense. I'm excited about those two guys because I think those guys are are motivated for all the talk that we have heard about. Oh, well, Vic Fangio, uh, the Miami Dolphins hated Vic Fangio. They didn't like him. Now the Eagle players, they're not going to like him too. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like to me, the young guys, uh, some of the most important guys, are buying into Vic Fangio and what he's saying, okay? Uh, Jordan Davis, yesterday, OTAs, I mean, you see him out in practice, he looks thin. He looks thin. Then he comes, he talked to the media, uh, and, and he started talking about Vic Fangio. He said, Jordan Davis on the difference with Vic Fangio as the Eagles defensive coordinator. It's really no BS with him. And I'm telling you, that is so, so important for the Eagles. Uh, we, we need a guy. We need a defensive player or a coach who's a bit old school, who has a little bit of that philosophy. Toughen these guys up, man. That's what he needs to do, okay? Uh, here's what Davis said about, you know, about uh, Vic Fangio. He said, it's no bull crap, he said. Uh, no bull, he was saying bullshit, but, but crap for the uh, paper reasons, I guess. It's really no BS with him. It's straight ball. Some people like it for better or for worse. I played with all type of coaches from high school, college. I mean, Kirby Smart is the worst of the worst. So not the worst of the worst, but he's old school. It's a job to do. You do your job, and if you don't uh, do it, it's a miss. Uh, it's so true. If you don't go out there and play, they're, they're not going to play you. I, I mean, I, I, I just like that. You know what I mean? If you don't do your job, you're on the bench. Um, listen, Vic Fangio was in Miami. There were problems with the Dolphin players. We, we know that. We're not going to avoid it. But, I mean, listen. For whatever reason, I think the Eagle players seem like they're buying into it, okay? Uh, they seem like it. Uh, we run it. He expects us, everybody on the field. He's expecting us to be on the field for as long as we can, said Davis. So, you know, we just know that he wants us to be out there. And, I mean, if you're going to be out there, be a player out there, you're going to be the dude. You want to be out there. You want to be the dude. And you want to play. So, I want to be the dude. So, I want to play. So, what does that mean? No juice for his big fat caboose. That's what he's saying. Uh, in order for Jordan Davis to go out there and play, he has to be in shape. He has to be conditioned. Now, like I said, I was blown away when he said 350. I was thinking he was somewhere around 320. Uh, but he looks like he looks like a, a 225 pound guy who's maybe 6'2". He's only like 6'7". But I mean, he looks he looks great. He he looks absolutely great. Okay. Um, Davis said he's improved his diet. He said, uh, Davis said he's improved his diet and is trying to be more active even on his days off. This is something I am working on too, okay? 
even if that just means taking walks or hikes. Davis acknowledged 350 pounds is a lot of weight to carry around, but he says he's wearing his weight better than he is in the past. It looks a lot better than last year, Davis said. Now, last year, Davis started 17 games. Last year, uh, he only played in 45% of the Eagles' defensive snaps, and they took him off the field a lot. He said a uh, new defensive coordinator, Vic Fangio, wants him on the field more, and he thinks he's in the shape for it. So in, so in order for this to work with Davis, he's going to have to be in shape, okay? Oh, God, I, I'm telling you, uh, it's huge. It's huge that he's in shape, and he's going to play a lot. Now, I believe a lot, of, a, a lot of people don't believe that Jordan Davis can play three downs. I believe that Jordan Davis could be a three-down back. I think he's athletic enough to do it. I think he showed us uh, how good he can be. Uh, but he's got to be better conditioned. And there's no doubt about it. He wore out uh, as, as, the, as the season went on. When, when you know, we started the year out, he was, he was really good. But he just, you know, after that Josh Allen chase where he chases him down and he gets him out of bounds and he just lays her like this. For like 10 minutes, I knew it. I knew it. When they went to commercial and he's lying like this, and then they come back from commercial and he's still laying like this, and then you have Buffalo players were like kind of laughing, so they, they weren't worried that he was hurt. They were laughing because he was just done. He was just done, okay? Um, so, uh, it, it was crazy. But, but Vic Fangio wants him to play in over 50% of the snaps. Uh, I think it's important that Jordan Davis is in shape. He looks like he's in great shape. Now, he's he looked better last year than his rookie year. So when he came into the uh, to the season last year, you know, we were talking about this and yeah, he looks good. He looks good. He looks like he lost some weight. Uh, but I think he gained it during the course of the season. You know, once you get out of training camp and you get into that routine of of the schedule and things like that, and then you get into December, and then they release you go to you go up to Wawa and they got eggnog, and then you're gonna say, oh, I saw this guy Philly 500. He was talking about this. I'm gonna try it, and then he takes that one sip of the eggnog, and it's like he, as 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 it touches his lips, he 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 starts everything. His whole his whole cortex, his brain starts to light up, and and he starts to see visions of the future, of the past, all at one time. And he sees that, that you know, this is nectar of the gods. And he just drinks that first sip of eggnog. And he gets chills down his back and his arms. And he's like, oh, this is great. Oh, uh, yeah. Then you're done. Then, then, you know, like 20 pounds in a week. Seriously. You could gain a lot of weight on eggnog. Believe me, I know. Okay? So... Jordan Davis got to be better conditioned during the season, and he's got to, you know, he's got to come into the season better conditioned. But he's also got to keep it. That's what he's talking about about remaining sedentary and things like that. And now with Vic Fangio going to him and saying, "Listen, there is no Fletcher Cox, there is no body to help you. It's you and Jalen Carter. You have to step up. We need you over fifty percent of the snaps." He's got to be in great shape. Um, and, and, and by all accounts, he looks great. He looks it. Now, he, he's going to have to maintain it. And I think this is really a make-or-break year for him. I also think Jalen Carter looks like he's really in, in good shape, too. I, I think he looks like he added some muscle from what I've seen. And I think both those guys, they come out there and they have a huge year. They have a monster year. If both those guys do this, the whole defense will be better than, than you know, a lot of people are worried. I think it helps everywhere. I think it helps. You get that inside pressure, right? You get that push up the middle. It's going to help your edge rushers out. If your edge rushers are being helped out and they can get free and they can start playing, that'll help your secondary out. And, of course, uh, I think it helps the middle of the field too, especially your linebackers. If you've got a guy like Jordan Davis um, who can take on two blockers and things like that. So, uh Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter are the key for this defense to get off, okay? Uh, if this defense wants to get off to a good start, if this defense wants to be good, if this defense, what's that? Who's calling? I hear a phone ringing. Did you guys hear that? That was weird. I, I don't know. I, I must be, the CIA must be tapping my phones or something. I don't know. I just heard a phone ring. But anyways, 
if Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter, if they are off to a good start, if they are playing good football, it's going to make everything easier for everybody else. It really, really is. And I look at Jay, Jordan Davis, okay, and I see a guy who I think has the talent to be a pro bowler every year. I think he's that good. And I will say this. A lot of people, they killed Jordan Davis last year. But I really thought that the first 11 games of the season, I thought he played really, really good. Uh, I would have liked to see him be better as a pass rusher. But I think against the run, I think he played pretty good. Just not getting enough snaps. He's not out there enough. And that's conditioning. And then I think he just he ran out of ga gas at the end of the year. Um, so if, if we get Jordan Davis to play up to his ability and be well conditioned and to play over 50% of snaps, um, Jordan Davis will help this defense be a lot better. And I think Jalen Carter, I think, I think what you'll see is if Jordan Davis goes out there and he's effective against the run and he's taking on two blocks all the time and he's out there snap after snap after snap, I think you'll see Jalen Carter get free a little more. I think his sack numbers go up. I think the edge rushers will have less, less pressure on them. And in turn, that'll help the secondary. Secondary will help the defensive line. You know how it works. But Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter remain the key for me. And the fact that he's in shape the way he is deserves this video, this video by itself. Okay, And then you take on top of that that it looks like and it sounds like they're buying into Vic Fangio, that he's an old school coach, old school approach, and that you have to go out there and you have to be accountable and you have to make plays. It's not going to just be given to you. I think that's a good sign. Uh, you know, we talk about Miami. I mean, listen, Miami was a team where they weren't that good. He came in, whether they liked Vic Fangio or not, he turned that defense around in Miami. Uh, but at the same time, they couldn't beat any, any of the really good teams out there. So it is what it is. Uh, but I like the fact that Carter and Davis seem to be buying in to what, what he's uh, pushing. And it's not just talk. We're seeing it. You can physically look at Jordan Davis. You can physically look at Jalen Carter, and you could tell those guys are putting their work in, and that's the most important thing. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. Of course, don't be a ding bad. Remember, it's how we vision, baby. We're all just living in it. Buda Baker, J. Ron Curse, Justin Simmons. We keep hearing safeties connected to the Eagles, and it's kind of crazy to me. Do the Eagles need a safety or don't they? That's really the question. And to me, they don't need a safety if you use the flying Frenchman. If you use the flying Frenchman, if you use Cooper DeGene in the slot at safety, you move him all around and you allow him to play safety, I think you'll be fine. Uh, listen, Reed Blankenship can play if need be, but if something happens and if you look at the depth behind the safety position, you have to wonder. So I think it's important that Cooper DeGene get some reps at safety. I do think by, uh, by some point during training camp preseason, we will see that happen. We just got to be patient. With that said, Denzel Washington out. <laughs> oh, dude, what the fuck? The Cooper! The flag! Oh, my God. Oh, oh, my God. Ah, C'est bon! C'est bon! I'm dizzy. We did it. We did it. We transformed the Philadelphia Eagles secondary. We now have a secondary that is going to be good for years to come. Because one, we got Quinion Mitchell, but we also got the flying Frenchman Cooper DeGene. That's right. The flying Frenchman Cooper DeGene. Says a ball. Oh, here's another interception. That's right. Cooper DeGene is about to dominate the NFL. Can't wait to see him out on the field. And if you're like me, and you thought this was a great move by the Eagles, and you support this pick, then you definitely want to check out this shirt. The Cooper DeGene Flying Frenchman shirt. Look at this thing. You can see it in midair, flying through the air, transforming to an eagle. That's right. Cooper DeGene is here. Link is in the description. Get your shirt now while you can, because Cooper DeGene is about to take the Eagles to another level. Denzel Washington, out.